Hello everyone, I'm Ruffy1322 and welcome to a discussion video where I'm doing something that I haven't done for a long time and that's analyse, review, ramble on about the latest GTA DLC. I used to do this after every single DLC, I'd sit down for a bit and talk about the cars, the new features, all that kind of stuff and then I think it was kind of when we started to do the podcast that was when I sort of stopped doing these because we used to just talk about the DLCs on the podcast we still do that from time to time now but we also talk about a lot of other things as well so obviously the podcast is on its own channel as well and if you want to check that out I'll, the link's always down below but yeah I, I kind of thought hey for the criminal enterprises dlc let's bring this back now that the dust has settled let's just sit down ramble on about the latest dlc let's talk about it let's give some thoughts and discussion you can give me all your thoughts down below in the comments when, when i'm done as well and yeah, just bring it back because I've kind of missed rambling on like this about these DLCs. And like I say, we used to do it on the podcast and we don't do it to the same length anymore. So let's just bring it back. Now, for me, it's interesting that I guess I've always thought of, I've always sort of been in the minority uh, when it comes to my thoughts about DLCs. At least most of the time, whenever there's a DLC that a lot of people seem to like, I dislike it and every time I've you know I've been quite harsh on Rockstar over the years certainly you know around the Doomsday Heist period I, you know, I put up a video saying how bad I thought the Doomsday Heist was and a lot of I got a lot of pushback from that I've always obviously thought about you know the the finer parts of a DLC where it's it's things that the majority of people might not really care about or something obviously things related to the racing community so most of the time if there's been a DLC that's been relatively okay and I've had problems with it I've often gotten pushback now this time it seems like this is a DLC where I've actually felt quite positive about it and I've still gotten a lot of pushback so it's interesting I said in one of my early videos on the DLC that, you know, the, or I think it was before it came out and Rockstar put out that big list of quality of life updates that they were making to the DLC and I, I just basically I was kind of a little bit positive about that, you know, saying how good of an idea that was. It was nice to see Rockstar actually putting some thought and attention to the finer parts of the game that have been left untouched for years. And people seem to assume that that was me just absolving Rockstar of all guilt for the last nine years. And that obviously isn't the case. The fact that I'm speaking positively about some parts of this DLC means that I am I think that some things that they've done right here, right now, are a good step. It doesn't absolve them of the last nine years of bad decisions and terrible practices they've introduced for the game they would need another nine years of good practices and good decisions to you know even get back to a level playing field but it's a start you know you can't always be going against them you know they, they, they can't at the minute it feels like you know if they, if they put out any normal dlc that's just full of a lot of new content but it's got a lot of bugs as well with it and you know they, they, they get a lot of pushback for that and then the one time that they introduce a dlc that make some good quality of life changes and improves on some things they get a lot of pushback for that as well because there's not enough content so you know at the minute I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if Rockstar are just looking at it and thinking well they can't do any right what's the point because there's been quite a bit of negativity to this, to this DLC and I'm, I'm kind of surprised by it it really surprised me to see so much negativity I, I guess you know from a negative point of view the, the new missions that we got aren't that great and beyond that there's not an awful lot else to the DLC obviously the, the cars that we get they're pretty much standard in every DLC at this point but beyond that th you know there's not an awful lot of brand new content like other DLCs where you've got new you know a heist or new building new business all that kind of stuff but I just I just feel like you can't overlook the immense amount of quality of life changes they made because it was vast the amount of things that they fixed and improved upon and changed obviously there's some bugs that are either still there or some bugs that are newly introduced but i think this might be the first dlc ever where 
the total number of bugs and glitches and issues in the game actually reduced rather than got higher with a new DLC. Some of the changes they made to say the creator for example with a hundred fixture removals up from 40 on the new gen platforms like that is huge and little things like that all the way through that they're not gonna you know get the headlines they're not gonna be a, a major talking point they're not gonna suddenly well some of them might be but most aren't gonna like bring someone back to the game who's kind of not been on for a few months but this they're much needed for those of us who are on the game most of the time and I think it's just a shame that there has been such a negativity to this kind of DLC because for me this should be the blueprint for future DLCs and updates to the game going forward even into GTA 6 you have your large scale DLC in the winter as they've done plenty of times in the past you know um, the, the new heist or whatever it might be the contract DLC for example with the agency bringing Franklin back new building new business new big mission type DLCs that those are generally best performing in the winter that's when Rockstar put out their biggest DLCs the, the December DLC is always the big the best the sort of you know the, the, the major one and then for me th the summer DLCs should be like this we get a bunch of new cars which is always great maybe the missions could be a little bit more interesting or better paying or a few game modes that are a little bit better than what we actually got but I don't feel like we need a you know major new business with every update or something like that a new building to buy with every update and this summer's DLC it's a little bit smaller scale but focuses on quality of life updates I would love that for the remainder of GTA Online's life and then going into GTA 6. I don't need a massive DLC twice a year. Once a year is totally fine and especially with GTA 6 and starting from the very beginning if they, if they start squishing the bugs every summer and making the small changes that we've seen in this DLC every single summer it will add up over the years to give us the experience that we really want. Now we've got things in the game from this DLC that we were asking for in 2014 like ghosting to the first checkpoint and uh, in races people ghosting when they go in reverse I was suggesting stuff like that in a racing update idea back in 2014 but it's taken them nine well eight years to give us it if they started in say the summer of 2015 with a quality of life update that introduced that we would have had seven years with it you know so I don't know it just it was a, it was a surprise to me I was surprised by the the amount of negativity to I mean at least maybe it just depends on you know what you generally do in GTA um, but for me seeing all these quality of life updates was at least a refreshing change and it, it I, I can't I can't complain at them too much for focusing on stuff like this because I this is the kind of stuff that I want to see you know in an ideal world we'd have updates every couple of months that would introduce stuff like this all the time but that's not going to happen you know nearly 10 years into the life of GTA Online but I think you, think you can't always you can't always be negative about every single thing that they do because then they can't do anything right and then they'll just always go for whatever sells the most shark cards which is what they've been doing for the last nine years but once they actually put some time and thought and effort into some quality of life changes that are actually impact us for and, and you know selling things in lobbies that is detrimental to shark card sales because we now be able to you know people who might have sold something in a public lobby got it destroyed and then they just think oh fine i'll just buy a shark card obviously i'm talking about just any random person playing the game now they can just sell in an invite only session so you know these are the kind of changes i want to see and i want to praise rockstar when they make changes like this of course it doesn't absolve them of everything else that they've done over the last nine years and the ways that they've taken this game and the approaches that they've taken with it but it's a start and I, I, I feel like they deserve some praise for making these kind of changes because yeah it, it's a change but yeah people have said that maybe they're only doing this because 
it's coming to the end of the life of GTA Online. You know, GTA Online is it, they're, they're sort of going to be wrapping up in a year or two, for example, and now they they've got all these ideas and things that they wanted to do in, in backlog and they're just trying to get it all out before they stop development and move completely over to GTA 6 that could be the case you know like I said nothing that I'm saying about the positivity of this DLC necessarily talks about what they're going to continue to do in the future I would like to see them keep doing this and keep updating the game and keep making quality of life changes even into GTA 6 but we can't we can't say for certain that's going to happen and yes this might just be a case of putting as much good stuff into the game and, and tying up loose ends as much as possible before they fully stop developing it entirely but either way those quality of life changes are still coming we're still getting those improvements and i'm not gonna bash on rockstar for doing it regardless of their intentions regardless of you know whether it's going to continue it's happened right here right now we've had some good changes made i want to see more of it but i'm going to praise them for when they do it because otherwise what's the point in them continuing if they're going to get negativity regardless of what they do so yeah I, I, all, all in all i think i'm positive about the dlc i think it's it's not necessarily one of the best dlcs we've ever seen but it's it's certainly not one of the worst and I'm happy with the changes that we got to this and I want to see it. I want to see more like this. I would ho I wish that they may change the drip feed. That's the only thing that kind of still really annoys me. I, I really, I've always hated it and I still hate it. The fact that they do one car every week. It just, it's always been such an annoyance and even if they wanted to stretch it out for as long as they currently do, I would prefer to see them release sort of four cars a month. And by that I mean four cars at once at the start of the month and then another four cars at the start of the next month. Yes, the drip feed would last just as long, but to me that is a much nicer way of doing it. You know, you release a few cars every month rather than one car a week. It gives people an idea to, you know, choose what they want to buy and it just it doesn't require you to be constantly thinking about the game especially if you know you're playing a lot of other stuff as well the idea that there's a new car every week and then all the drip feed videos come out and you realize that you're gonna have to wait months for the next car that you want or it it, it just you know i would much rather they did it in groups honestly uh, but hey that's the way that they've done it for so long now i don't think it was maybe it was import export was the last time they did it in they did a drip feed in groups like that um but yeah that's the only thing that i would like to see them change in future when it comes to you know dlc delivery i guess you could say um when it comes to the cars i've obviously i've driven a, quite a few of the drip feed cars at this point uh there'll be a video with a random race with all the criminal enterprises dlc cars coming out in two days time on friday this friday uh, so keep an eye out for that obviously it'll be all the pre-existing cars and the uh, the new cars as well, the drip feed cars that aren't released to the game. And basically to do a bit of a race, give my thoughts on each of them. Uh, on Project Homecoming obviously, uh, it's a random race. And a lot of them seem quite nice, you know. It, it might not be that many of them are going to be anywhere near the top of their classes, but in terms of driving experiences, Project Homecoming might give me a bit of uh, a nicer driving experience because some of the advanced flags for some of the cars that are going to make them worse to drive have been removed. But, you know, something like the 10F, for example, I can't see the 10F ever being anywhere near the top tier for sports cars. But from my experience, it felt quite nice to drive. And me personally, that's all I really look for these days. As long as it's a nice driving experience, we have the tier system where we can say restrict our racing to sport B and there would be you know they say be every every car that's in the same pace of, of all the other cars in sports B we just race with those cars so the at the absolute performance of these cars doesn't really matter so much to me anymore especially when it comes to organized racing and with almost a hundred cars now in the sports class nearly 50 in the supers class god knows how many in muscle and motorcycle the class system is just a joke anyway so 
all I really look for and all I really care about is cars that are just nice to drive, you know, interesting to drive. The Torero XO is easily my favorite car from the DLC. And it's because, ironically, it doesn't get the traction bonus from having a spoiler. Uh, obviously, I've talked about this in previous videos where we talked about the broken spoilers, how the downforce and spoilers work. I'll leave a link to that fact finding video down below if you haven't seen it already. But uh, the Torero XO, alongside the Omnis EGT and probably the two 10Fs as well, they're affected by the same um, handling feature, I'll say, as the Italia RSX and the two Comet S2s, where the, they have active spoilers, they also have spoiler upgrades, and they have downforce handling files as well, in the handling files as well. But none of it actually improves their traction. They've got a hard coded thing that locks the uh, wheel downforce values to 0.035, which is exactly the same as any other car without a spoiler upgrade. And to me, it makes those cars that I've tried with it better. As I said in that original fact finding video, the Italia RSX without that would be almost as quick as the open wheel cars, it would be completely broken. Uh, the Torero XO, it would probably be on the top pace of supers, it would be up there with the HSW Ignis and uh, Cyclone 2, but it's so much better how it is now without that extra grip. It has a massive engine power, massive engine upgrade, the Torero, and it doesn't have the most amazing amount of grip, yet it still is able to get a crazy lap time around the track, and it just feels so much fun to drive. It's so good. You know, it, it, for, for a long time, I've been complaining really and talking about the power to traction ratio where cars have gradually gotten more and more traction. It started with obviously the spoilers upgrade in 2014 where when the game first came out, spoilers didn't increase traction. And then they made an update where spoilers suddenly increased traction. So all cars with a spoiler upgrade suddenly got quicker around the lap. And that was the first point at which cars just became more and more grippy. Um, and, and we've seen that over the years where adding, you know, they added downforce with the cunning stunts vehicles and they've since just taken that to new levels. The open wheel cars are just, you know, there's no power behind those open wheel cars. They top out at 120 miles per hour and they go around corners basically full speed on every single corner. And that isn't interesting to drive. It's not interesting to race with because there's no skill there in, you know, breaking for a corner, making sure you've got the right line and the right speed, all that kind of stuff. So it seems like obviously the LM87 is another one of those high traction cars, but you, you can kind of forgive those high traction cars like you know it's a Le Mans prototype it's an open wheel car you expect them to have high traction abilities it would be nice if they were a bit more powerful as well but hey it is what it is but it seems like they're starting to maybe readdress that balance to the power to traction ratio with things like the Torero with things like the Italia RSX and the 10Fs they're locking them into a into a permanent state of having no spoiler benefits basically going back to how it was pre-2014 and it, the cars are better for them they're much more interesting to drive they've got big power but not an, they've got good grip but not enough grip that you can just go flat out around every corner in that fact finding video i talked about how the adder was one of the best cars to race with because it had big power big powerful engine and no spoiler upgrade so it didn't get the extra traction well, to me, the Torero XO is like the Adder 2.0. It feels very similar to race with, very similar to drive, and easily my favorite car from the DLC from a driving perspective, which is really all I care about. Uh, so, you know, I hope they continue down that path as well and, and continue to add cars that are just more interesting to race with, more interesting to drive, rather than just traction monsters that you can go full throttle around every corner and there's no consequences because it just it just feels stupid. So yeah, um, I, for me, mostly positive for this DLC. Um, overall, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with everything that we've gotten. Obviously, I will be testing all the cars as they come out and there might be individual quirks with some of them that won't be too good by the way i'm not here for the next two weeks i'm going to be in sweden so there's going to be no there's going to, there'll be some testing tomorrow and then the next two thursdays after that 
there won't be any testing but then the Thursday after that I'll have what whichever two cars are released in the next two Thursdays I'll test those at the same time as whichever cars released on that third Thursday and you'll have a video with all three cars in one go so the testing will happen you just have to be a little bit patient for whatever cars come next week um, and there'll be uh, no videos next week I'm planning and then there might be a few videos the week after that just to you know things that I've got backlogged um, but yeah I won't actually be here to be able to do any testing so um, yeah in, in, enjoy the new cars um, not like I said none of them seem like they're going to be on the top pace of their classes so none of them are must buys um, maybe buy them if you like the look of them or you just want that car anyway regardless of its performance uh, but otherwise you can wait and and testing will happen of course as it always does so yeah um that's pretty much it let me know your thoughts about the dlc down below in the uh, comments let me know your thoughts about bringing back these analysis and rambo videos it, it's it's yeah it's a blast from the past just sitting down and talking about a dlc it, it's it, it's it's uh it's been a while that i've done that so hopefully it hasn't been too annoying to hear me just ramble on again but yeah that's pretty much it for this one thank you guys so much for all your support as always thanks so much for all the support during the dlc and patreon supporters youtube members and all that kind of stuff thank you guys and yeah i'll see you um for a testing video tomorrow and then i'll see you for a testing video when i get back in a couple of weeks time thanks guys see you next time